Hi everyone, welcome to my show. Wherever you are in the world, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love for you to post questions. I'd love for you to tell me where you're from and give me your feedback, your comments, whatever. I love hearing from you. So today I wanted to talk about the power of transformation. And here's where I want to go with this. I know a lot of you do have, have experienced spiritual transformation. So many of you write in and you tell me you've had this experience, you've had this transformation, but you don't know how to hold on to it. You don't know how to integrate it into your life. You still feel stuck in your life or you don't know what to do with it. That's a very, very common issue and a very common problem. Um, because actually spiritual transformation is available for everybody, everybody. You know, you can get it. People have experienced Kundalini awakenings. They experience, um, um, they experience enlightenment. There's so much of this that's available for you. And you, uh, and people who, whether you choose to meditate or whether you're out in nature and, uh, or, you go to um, a retreat or something, or you go to an event like a sound bath or something. There are all these events that are conducive to you having the experience. But here's the hard part. Even an experience like what I had, which brought me to the brink of death. I mean, here, I actually had to die. Um, once you then go back to living your life, that's when the challenge is. The challenge is not in having such an experience because people um, go to shamans and they can have an experience with ayahuasca, or with breath work, all kinds of things. But it's the challenge is in taking that experience into your life and integrating it. And that is actually the bigger challenge. So when I had the experience that I did, and I'm sure many of you relate to it, when I was in that realm, I experienced, or my understanding of life was so different. I mean, it felt so clear. And it, what I understood about life was so different from what I had been conditioned to believe. The experience was one where I knew that love transcended everything. And yet here, we come back here, and we live in this fearful full world. We live in this fearful world and we kind of think, what is wrong with everyone? Why can't they see it the way I see it? And so for me, the challenge was in going back or coming back into this paradigm. And I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to integrate my experience. <clears throat> but here was my pain point. I knew that the person I used to be was the person that got, that got cancer. The person I used to be was the person that got cancer. And that was the person who fit in to this paradigm. That was the person who was the people pleaser, the doormat. That was the person who um, made herself so small and dimmed her light to the point of being invisible. That's who I was and that was the person that got cancer. When I was completely healed of the cancer after my near-death experience, I knew that if I went back to that old life, that old paradigm, back to my old community, I knew that I would then go back to being that person I used to be, and that was the person that got cancer. So I had to get to know who I am. And this is the first step one I would ask you to do. If you have had a spiritual experience, an enlightening experience, a kundalini awakening, anything like that, a near-death experience, the first thing I would ask you to do is to get to know who you are and give yourself, give yourself the space, the time, the space, to get to know who you are outside of your environment. Because the problem is the old you, the you before the experience, has been shaped by your environment. And I, what I realized in the other realm is that the true me is who I am inside. But then I develop layers by allowing the environment to shape me and by allowing the environment to dictate who I'm going to be. And as I try to please everybody outside, in the outside world, in my environment, that's how I lose myself. 
So in order to find yourself, you need to remove yourself from the environment for a while and you need to get to know who you are. And when you do this process, do it without judgment. And I really mean without judgment. Just observe yourself, ask yourself questions. And this is what I did. I literally had to remove myself from my environment. And for me, I truly felt I had no choice unless I wanted to go back to be the person that got cancer. Because when I started to share with the people around me, before I removed myself from everyone, and I started to share what I had learned in the other side, I said, do you know that the lives we've been conditioned to live is completely the opposite of what we need to know and what we need to live in order to live a happy, healthy, productive, successful life. Our paradigm has set us up to fail. It set us up to compete with everybody. It set us up to make, a, make us feel small, to make us feel flawed, to make us feel we have to run on this treadmill to try harder, to do more, to be better, to get ahead. But actually that whole thing is an illusion. There is nothing to get ahead of. And all we're doing is doing this our entire life until the end of the journey when our life is over and we realize, that's when we realize that actually there was nowhere to go. Our whole life has been in trying to get somewhere, but there's nowhere to go. And so when I realized this in the other realm and I tried to explain it to people, people said I wasn't being realistic. They said I was being delusional. They said that you need to have a job to pay the bills or how can you live? And so people told me I was being delusional. So I had to remove myself from that situation and I had to make a commitment to myself to start to be my authentic self. And that started with getting to know who I am. I was committed to not going back to being that person and to not getting cancer again. And this is why I started to live my life authentically. And so the first thing was to ask, who am I? Who am I if no one is around to tell me or to reflect me back to me? What are my likes? What are my dislikes? What are my loves? What are my passions? What are my fears? These are the kinds of questions I started to ask myself. If I could be doing anything I want and had no fear, what would it be? Those are the kinds of questions that really got deep into who I am. And I decided to honor those things. And as I started to live them, the second question I would ask myself is, what am I doing or what have I taken on that is not me? In other words, what do I keep saying yes to that I wish I could say no to? And even if you can't say no to them right away, maybe you have commitments and you, you want to honor the commitments, it's important to know what those things are. So at least you know, okay, this is not me, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it as a favor, but this is not what I'd normally like to do. This is not who I am. Start to identify what is not me. What, what have I said yes to that I, would norm, that I would prefer to say no to? So this is what also I started doing. And I started writing and I started digging deep. Now, as I started to live a more authentic life, I found that the friends I attracted liked me or loved me for who I am, not for who I was trying to be. Because I used to be someone that would try and please everyone. And now I was attracting new friends that loved me for who I am authentically. So it was a completely different experience. And my life started to unfold in miraculous ways. I just had to stick to it and make this commitment to myself. And I saw how my story went viral and Wayne Dyer discovered my story. And then I started living a life which I could never even have dreamed of or even imagined. Like if I had to figure out how to do this or how to get here, I wouldn't have been able to figure it out. There's no way. I'm not that smart. All I had to do was honor who I am and be authentic and allow myself the time and the space to get to know who I am with no judgment. So years on, I'm living this life that I really love, that I feel is truly mine. And the people who were part of my life before I got cancer, they all came back into my life. And today they ask me things like, oh my God, I love your life. You're so lucky. You're so blessed. How do you do that? How can I do what you do? How can I have what you have? And my response to them is, I guess you gotta be delusional. And that's really the only response I have for people. 
you really do have to be delusional and you really have to allow yourself to be who you are and now every time someone says I'm delusional I fall off my unicorn so I would love to hear your questions now and Milena have you got any questions for me yes first I want to say you're getting love from all over the world we have people just from every current country you can imagine oh. a lot of love from Mexico today too Yay. and Australia and then Kimberly Miller uh, wrote, you know, she wants to watch, but it's too noisy where she is. She's at the Seattle Pride Parade. And Yay! there's tons of love there. <laughs> so she's just sending you some of that love. Um, Sandra asks, can you tell us how to communicate with our bodies? How to find out why we are suffering certain sy symptoms? Okay, so that's a great question because there's lots of ways to do that. So two things, I'll give you two ways at least. So number one is if you sit or lie quietly, could be in bed, could be lie on a yoga mat, you could put on some music, and then um, focus your, um, put your focus on wherever in your body that you have discomfort. Like if there's a certain part of your body that you have discomfort, put your focus there whether it's an organ or just an area of your body or a limb or muscle or whatever. And then, um, and this is specifically for things like discomforts and illnesses that haven't come as a result of a fall or banging into something. Because what you're gonna do is you're going to ask that part of your body why it's come, why it's there, and what it needs you to do to support it, to alleviate that pain or to alleviate that illness or to alleviate that sickness. So if you're going through something like heart disease, cancer, things like that, that's a great way to, to talk to your symptoms. Ask them, ask your symptoms, what do you need me to do to support you? What, why are you here? What have you come to tell me? I don't want you to ask, what have you come to teach me? But I, but I prefer, at least for me, I prefer asking, what have you come to tell me? What is your message? So try that and lie with it for 20 minutes, half an hour, and just see what comes to your mind. Um, so that's one way I would do it. And as soon as you come out of it, as soon as you get insights, write them down, write them down right away. Now here's another way that I like to do it is that I like to visualize myself, and this is not necessarily like taking 30 minutes or anything, just do this right now. Visualize yourself as if you are just a body of energy, which is what you are. Even though all you can see is your physical body, in actuality, you are life force energy. You are um, chi, prana, whatever you want to call it. You are an embodiment of life force energy. When your life force energy is very strong, which is when you're happy, joyful, passionate, when things in your life are going great, your life force energy is running at full force and it is like vibrant and violet. And even though you can't see it, when you walk into a room, people can feel your life force energy. Now, I want you to imagine yourself at full vibrant life force energy. Now, every time something happens, like somebody makes you sad, disappoint, disappointed, or you watch the news and something makes you angry or upset, um, every time something like that happens to affect you in some way, your life force energy goes down a little bit and it goes down a little more and down a little more. And so people who have depleted life force energy, in other words, people who feel um, drained, people who feel sick, what's happened with them is that things have happened. It could be um, bad relationships, fears, angers, um, anything. All these kinds of things contribute in bringing down that vibrant life force energy and just bringing it down a little more, a little more, a little more. And when it gets to the point where you're completely depleted, if you're not re-energizing yourself and you're completely depleted, believe me, you feel it. Eventually it manifests as, as illness, but even before it manifests as illness, it starts out as just you feeling run down, feeling tired. So when you start to become aware 
And what are the things from the outside world? What are the people? What is it that from the outside world that's depleting your energy? Then you start to become aware. And this is the other way of being aware of your body and your energy. You start to become aware what it is that's depleting your energy. But here's the other side of it. You also have to become aware of what is charging your energy. And usually it's being with people you love. It's laughter. It's loving your work, being passionate about something. So be aware of those because those charge your energy and be aware of what depletes your energy. And one more thing just to watch out for, people who have trouble receiving, who are very good at giving and giving and have trouble receiving, they're very good at depleting their energy but not good at charging their energy. So be aware of that. If you're a giver, you need to learn to receive as well so that you can charge your energy. So. Brigitte says her son is asking, if in this world everything is happening as it's supposed to happen, do I have an individual personal free will? Is it even possible to improve myself? Yes, you do have free will. So here's the thing. What we have labeled as destiny, to me, our destiny is our highest calling. What I mean by that is that it is the intention which we came here to fulfill. So it is purely an intention, but we have the free will as to whether to fulfill our destiny or not. So you come here with this yearning to fulfill certain intentions that you had before you even came here. Those intentions, that is what we can call our destiny. But now you have a, the free will as to whether you want to fulfill those intentions or that destiny or not. So here's what prevents you from fulfilling it. Um, lack of self-love, uh, fears. So these are the things that prevent you when you have low self-worth, low self-esteem, when you don't feel you're worthy or deserving, or when you, um, I guess things like that, anger, all these things can cause you to stray from your path. But when you search for um, what makes you joyful, passionate, when you search for your, when you find your calling, your calling and following your heart, these things are what actually keeps you on your destiny, if you will. This is when you know you are fulfilling the intentions you came here to fulfill. It's when you follow your heart. People ask me, uh, you know, whenever I say it's, it's self-love, the more you love yourself, the easier it is to actually fulfill your calling, your destiny. And people say, but how do I love myself? Loving yourself and loving your life is one and the same thing. Um, feeling passion for your life is the same as loving yourself. Allowing yourself to receive, receive good things, is the same as loving yourself. Knowing that you're worthy and deserving is the same as loving yourself. Allowing yourself to charge your batteries, your energy, is loving yourself. Lack of self-love is when you allow yourself to give and give to the point of being depleted, but never recharge your own batteries. That's lack of self-love. Rachel um, is asking, when people get a life-threatening illness and crossover, is it always or usually because they're out of alignment or could they be leaving for other reasons? Lots of people seem to be passing over right now. They definitely would be leaving for other reasons. Um, when people cross over, I don't actually believe they're out of alignment. I think everybody who crosses over is with alignment. There has to be, um, <clears throat> basically we all have to die at some point. And so if somebody crosses over after an illness, they did not lose the battle. It bothers me that our culture labels it as having lost the battle to cancer or lost the battle to whatever. They did not lose any battles. There are no battles to fight. The, you know, our illnesses are not wars to be won. It's our body communicating with us. And if somebody actually feels they can do more from the other side, then they haven't lost the battle. In fact, what if it's the other way around? What if the people who cross over are actually the ones who won? And we're the ones who've lost the battle because we're stuck here. <laughs> you know, who's to say? So yeah, they haven't lost anything. They're actually, be they've become beautiful guardian angels who look after us. So thank you for that question.
Massimo has a very difficult decision to make and is wanting to receive guidance from the other realm. He doesn't want to make the wrong choice. Do you have any suggestions on how to tap into guidance from the other realm? Yes, it's actually very easy and it's easier than you think. The only thing that gets in the way is our own self-doubt. So if you can, uh, if you can suspend any self-doubt, then all you have to do is put yourself in a quiet space and just start calling on them and talking to them. And here's the thing, anything that comes into your head that feels uplifting, that feels like, you know, makes you feel good, that gives you goosebumps and makes you feel, oh my God, I resonate with this. That is your guidance. Anything that makes you feel um, doubtful, like who do you think you are, or this isn't true, all of that is not the guidance. That's your mind. That's your conditioning from this physical world. So I, I'm so happy you asked that question because one of the problems I have with our current paradigm is that, is that all these kinds of things which actually help us, which actually help us be, get in touch with who we are, we, people who are in tune with that, people who are sensitive, people who know this to be true, when we talk about it, very often we are the ones labeled as being out there or woo-woo or quacks. But in actuality, um, you know, if you ask someone who's not in tune with all this, how's their life going for them? They're the ones who are lost and confused. And yet they think they're more plugged into reality than we are. So remember, if you're plugged into it, you don't have to tell people about it if you don't want, if you're afraid of being labeled as woo woo or crazy. But remember, you've got it right. You've got it right, okay? All right. Let's do sorry, one got, last Yeah, one. let's do one last one. I'm sorry. I kind of got okay. lost in your um, <laughs> answer okay. and then I uh, lost track of the questions. Uh, I, I misplaced, uh, I don't know the name, but someone was asking about how how to deal with bullies and really competitive people at work. She, the, their energy just drains her to where she doesn't even want to go to work. Oh, that's really sad to hear. And, and I actually know how that feels because I was in a job like that many years ago. And that energy is very, it, it erodes at who you are. So there's a couple of things. Like, first of all, I honestly would consider looking for another job or speaking to someone within the organization who you think can help you or move you to a different department. But while you are doing that or while that's happening, what I would ask you to do for yourself is I would ask you to make a list of all the things that make you feel good about yourself. Because right now it's really important that you keep your life force energy high. So you know a little while ago how I spoke about that vibrant, violet life force energy that we all have? When we're in a place that, um, where we're faced with bullies or people who demean us, that life force energy gets chipped and chipped and chipped away. And it makes us feel drained. So we have to consciously work at keeping that life force energy high. So while you are at that job, in that position, do whatever you can to keep that life force energy high. If it means spending your weekends with friends that love you, that make you laugh, or family members. If it means going out and having a joyful time. You know, do whatever it takes to keep that life force energy high while you are dealing with this problem. But here's the second thing. I do not want you to feel that this is something that you can put up with for the long term or the rest of your life. You need to love yourself enough to be able to do something to remove yourself from this situation. You need to have the courage to speak to someone within the organization. Speak out and say, this is how you're feeling. This is how you're being treated. If they don't remove you from this department, you know, you can say you're going to report them to the authorities, whatever government authorities, or that you're going to leave the job or something, but you need to take action. But while you're taking action, please uplift your energy. 
and also keep your eyes out for a new job, a new workplace. And as you start to put it out there that you're looking for somewhere new, and as you keep your energy uplifted, something will come along. These two actions in itself will trigger something to come along. Because remember, when your own energy is uplifted, you're, you're actually on a higher frequency. And when you're on a higher frequency, you notice things, you attract things off that frequency. So you will see things change even when you do that for yourself. So thank you so much for that question. Um, I love doing this, love all of you. I'm going to be doing quite a few more. And I know later this week, I'll be speaking with Scarlett Lewis. For those of you who don't know her, she is somebody who um, sadly lost her young son in a school shooting. And she will be speaking a little bit about that and her and what she's been doing since that's happened. But thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to read your comments and your questions. And your questions, even if I don't get to them on this particular video, they inspire me for future videos. So do let me know your questions. Love you. I'm sorry to the people I didn't get to, but uh, please keep commenting and keep, uh, keep giving me your questions. Thank you. Love you all. Have a great week. Bye.